Hi, this is Paul, and this is a quick demonstration of the custom script I've written for Studio One for use with the P1 Nano from Icon. Now, the most obvious difference between this and the uh, default Mackie script is that we've got four lines of text on the display, and this makes it a lot easier uh, to use and navigate uh, because you've got a lot more information. For example, we have the track numbers down here. We also have a select marker that shows you which is the selected track. So as I step through, then you can see the select marker moves. So you can easily see which one your fader is connected to. In this case, it's the overheads. And you can also directly select any of the tracks that you can see by just pressing this select button to put it into select mode. And then you can just uh, press one of the V-parts. So for example, if you want to select the snare, then that becomes the selected track. You can see we've also got the colors working here. So as we bank around the session, it's a lot easier to keep track of exactly where you are. So one of the annoying things about the Mackie script was that the Studio One console didn't follow along with the selections and bankings that you were making on the Nano. On my script, it does do that. So if we um, bank uh, right a couple of times, we can see that we start off on this left hand side here in the console. And as we bank, we've now looking at bank number two here. Now, if we go further, you can see the last track visible on the Studio One console is the Guitar DI, and that's the last track visible here as well. So if we go on to the next bank, you'll see that the Studio One console is banked, and we can now see the next bank that's, uh, that is currently showing on the Nano. And the opposite is true as well. So if we go all the way back to the start of the session and we select the snare track, you'll find that the Nano automatically banks. And it's brought the snare track into view there. As well as the track numbers, uh, we can also see automation statuses on each track. So I'll enable some now. So on snare, I can put that into read and you get a little R there. And if we go to the hi-hat, I can put that into say touch mode. And that's got a T there now. So the time code is much improved from the Mackie scripts. Um, there's a lot more space because we've got rid of the leading zeros and we've also got dots to separate each individual part of the time code um, or bars and beats, whatever you're looking at. So there's a lot more parameters that could be controlled than by using the Mackie scripts. As an example, this track seen here, um, the V-pots are connected to the input gain on the track and the press is connected to the polarity so I can flip the polarity quite easily. Other examples are on the sends. You can flip between pre-fader and post-fader for that send. And you can control Q-mixes and any uh, channel macros that you might have set up as well. So the metering has been greatly improved over the Mackie script. On the Mackie script, the zero dB level was about halfway through the third yellow segment, which was no use to anyone really. Um, it's just a, a light show. On this script, the 0 dB is right at the top of the yellow segments. So anything over 0 dB will light the red overload light. And the green segments, uh, the top of the green segment is minus 12 dB. As well as the meters showing you the volume as normal, um, you can also have them show the gain reduction by pressing the flip button. So now they're in gain reduction mode. Um, here, the kick, you can see there's a gate on it, so you can see the gate opening and closing. This bass DI track has a compressor on it, and you can see that the compressor is occasionally doing three, sometimes four dB of compression. Now, if you want to reset anything that's connected to the VPOTs to its default value, so for example, here's the input gain. If I want to get that back to zero, then a quick way to do that would be to engage the shift mode here. If I hold that now and I can click and it goes back to zero dB. The shift mode can also be latched on and off by just giving it a quick tap. That's latched on and then tap it to latch off. You can do the same thing with the fader. So if we bring the fader down, if I want that back to zero dB, I can just engage the shift mode, tap the fader, and it goes back to zero. Another nice feature is the bus and VCA spill mode. I'll demonstrate here on this main room bus. This has a reverb on it and it's being fed by a number of sends from various channels. In order to spill the bus, you must first select it. 
And once it's selected, you press the spill button here. And what we're seeing now is that the Nano is only showing the bus that you have selected, the main room bus, plus any channels that are sending to that bus. A similar thing happens with VCAs. So if we have a look at, um, let's say this keys VCA here, select it first. And with it selected, press the spill button. And now we're seeing the VCA channel and also all of the channels that the VCA is controlling. Now we can also do plug-in control here. Um, so if I enable the plug-in scene, this shows me all the plugins that are connected to the channels. So if we look, continue to look at this kick drum here, we've got a gate on it. If I click the V-pot here, it will open it in Studio One. And now the control surface is controlling the parameters for the gate. I've mapped a few here already. You can see I've got the open threshold on here and then the attack hold and release is on here. And you can see that as I'm changing it, the new values appear on the screen. The fader I have mapped to the range. So you can map eight rotary controllers, you can map the fader, and you can also map the VPOP presses to things like on off functions, for example, turning EQ bands on and off. So that gives you 17 controls to map in total, but you also have eight pages. So you can see the page indicator here is indicating one of eight. So if I press this uh, V pot here, I can move over to the next page. And you can see I've got nothing mapped on the second page, so everything is zeroed out again. But now I'm free to map all of these controls again to different controls on the plugin. So you've got 17 controls per page, you've got eight pages, so that gives you a total of 136 controls to map for each individual plugin. So that's just a brief look at what the scripts can do. Um, if you'd like to try them, you can go to the forum. There is a link in the description and you can download the scripts from there and all the documentation. And there's also links to full length tutorial videos. So thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next video.